All right, so in this set of slides, we're going to talk about uh, super dense codes, similar to teleportation uh, in the sense that it uses entanglement, but um, what we're trying to accomplish is slightly different, which we'll, we'll jump into. So it's another way that we take entanglement and apply it um, to transmitting information. When we think about teleportation, we're actually using entanglement to transmit a qubit. Uh, but whenever we look at super dense codes, we are trying to transmit classical information with the use of a quantum channel. So once again, we're working with two parties, but we are using a quantum channel to transmit two bits. So what are the requirements for super dense codes? Super dense codes, uh, they transmit two classical bits within a single qubit. Um, so in order to do this, we need uh, two parties who want to communicate with each other um, and two entangled qubits. So each party has one half of this entangled pair. So once again, it doesn't really matter where they get those entangled pairs from, they just have to have them in their possession or Alice and Bob, the two parties who are wishing to communicate. Uh, next, we also need a quantum channel to transmit a qubit from point A to point B. And then finally, our uh, two-bit secret message that we're trying to transmit um, from Alice to Bob. So this kind of sounds very similar to teleportation, but what is, what is the difference? So we can think about super dense codes as being the complete opposite of teleportation. Uh, we use quantum phenomenon, but we're trying to accomplish something a little different. So quantum teleportation, uh, what we were trying to do is use uh, a classical communication line and use two classical bits to transmit one qubit between Alice and Bob. And then super dense codes, we transmit two classical bits from Alice to Bob using one qubit. So here we have a classical channel with teleportation, and then here we have a quantum channel with uh, super dense codes. So let's walk through the mechanics of super dense codes. First, we're going to create an entangled pair of qubits uh, using our uh, classic same entangle without phase circuit. So Hadamard gate, C not gate. Um, start with two qubits in the basis state cat zero zero producing, and that produces um, an entangled state uh, of one over square root of two cat zero zero plus cat one one. Step two, we distribute those entangled qubits to Alice and Bob. So we have our two qubit state, and uh, we will go ahead and take half of it and give it to Alice, and then give the other half to Bob. So now Alice has two things in her possession. She has her half of the entangled pair, and also a classical message that she wishes to send to Bob. We're going to call that B1, B0. So two bits that she wants to transmit to Bob. So step three, Alice performs a couple of operations on her qubit. Now this is where it starts to get a little complicated. So um, just stay with me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, so in order to, to interact or get the information from her two bits onto her half of the entangled pair, she needs to apply a couple of, uh, of operations. So if her classical message is B1 uh, plus, or B1, B0 is equal to zero, zero, she applies no gates to her, to her qubit in her possession. If her message she wishes to transmit is a zero, one, she has to apply a not gate or an X gate to the qubit in her possession. So here we are. Uh, just as a note, since we have those double lines here, that means that we are going to uh, use a classic, we're using classical information. So this is a not gate that is classically controlled. And then if we have the bit stream of one zero we're wishing to transmit, we need to apply a Z operation. So if B1 is equal to one, B0, of course, if B0 is equal to zero, the qubit passes by here un, uh, unchanged and we apply a, a Z operation if B, bit one is one. Finally, if we want to transmit a one one, we apply a not gate as well as a Z gate. So both of these uh, 
um, controls will be active since we'll have a one value on both of, uh, at both of the, the controls. Um, and then we will transform the qubit analysis possession with a not operation as well as a Z operation. So once again, those double lines indicate classical information. So let's see what happens to that entangled state, how it changes. So if we have the classical message of um, zero, zero, we have no state change because we applied no gates. If we have the classical message zero, one, we apply an X gate and we see that um, Alice's qubit is the top qubit. So it's this first qubit here. So we have a not gate um, that is executed and we get the following uh, state. So our same entangle uh, state changes into a opposite entangle state. If we were to apply um, a Z operation in order to um, send the message one zero, we would add a phase to our same entangle state. And then finally, if we are transmitting a classical message of one one, we apply a not gate as well as a Z gate. So that creates an opposite entangle uh, without phase or an opposite tangle with phase. So here we have opposite entangle with a phase aspect because we applied that Z operation. So step four, Alice is now going to send her qubit to Bob. So now Bob has both parts of that entangled set. So he has two entangled qubits in his possession. Um, so this is where the need for a quantum channel is uh, in super dense codes. So um, the entangled state, uh, we have the following that we just calculated. So we have same entangle, opposite entangle, same entangle with phase, opposite entangle with phase. And that's present um, when Bob receives those qubits. He's going to apply a couple of operations to those qubits. He's going to invert the entanglement. And you invert entanglement by um, applying the C0 gate and the Hadamard operation. So we're going to apply first the C0 and then the Hadamard operation to invert that entangled state. So let's see how the state changes with each of these steps. So we have our entangled state that is initially received after the C0 operation. We're going to uh, look at the portion where we, uh, the portion of the state where we have a basis um, where the control is equal to one. So we would see that the control equal to one would cause the uh, C naught operation to toggle that would change the target to zero. Here, we have the same operation where we have a control equal to one, but now our target is equal to zero. So that target is going to be equal to one. Here, we have a, a target of one uh, transform into a, value with, into a value of zero. And then here, we have a, a target of zero transform into a, a value of one. So just as a note, if we look, we no longer have an entangled state. We've started to undo our entanglement first by applying our C0. And if we look at these two qubits, we can tell that we no longer have an entangled state because we're able to factor our state into um, tensor products into two into two quantum states that we can combine with the tensor product. So if we look at um, the state after the C naught, the second qubit here is zero, the second qubit here is zero, and then the second qubit here is one, and the second qubit here is one. So these states can now be factored into tensor products. So we are no longer working with an entangled state. We're uh, undoing that entanglement. Step one with applying that C naught. All right, now we're going to apply that H gate to fully undo uh, all of the entanglement procedures. So now we're going to look at what happens when we uh, apply that H gate to our state after C0. So that H gate is going to be on that top qubit and it's going to remove superposition. So we have this first qubit superimposed. Now we get state zero, zero. So we undo that superposition. We have no phase aspect there. So we go into a state cat zero and our second qubit's already in state cat zero. Here, 
same thing. We have a superposition without phase. That's going to transform into a ket zero, our second qubit's already in a state ket one. Here we have superposition with phase. We know that when we have uh, superposition with phase and we transform that by a um, H gate, that's going to produce a ket one for us. Our second qubit's already in ket zero. And finally, we have a, um, a superposition with phase once again, and then our second qubit is equal to cat one. So that becomes uh, cat one, one for us. So we can take note of the state that we see, and that is equal to the classical message that Alice uh, wished to send. So very neat. So step five, he has two qubits. But now he's got to turn that qubit information into classical information, the classical information that Alice sent. So he's going to perform measurement procedures. So uh, bit one is going to be on this top line, bit zero is going to be on this bottom line. And Bob's measurement results are equal to that message that Alice originally sent. So here is the full quantum circuit for super dense codes. Um, so here we see those double lines that indicates classical information um, and we can have classically controlled quantum operations. So if we were to divide that up, we would see that Alice it has this top part of the, the, the uh, circuit. So that's where she is more active in the communication um, protocol, whereas Bob is uh, active in this bottom part of the circuit. So um, he, inverts the entanglement and then also performs measurement to recover those bits. So here's the full circuit. All right, so we'll have a quick question. So how many entangled qubit pairs? So this is a little different from our previous question. How many entangled qubit pairs would be needed to transmit 32 bits of classical information? To summarize, superdense codes allow for 2x bit transfer as compared to classical transmissions alone. This is because we're using the power of entanglement and a quantum channel. So we see an increased bandwidth because we're able to do the transmission of two bits per qubit rather than a single bit at a time. And this is because some of the work associated with the transmission is completed in advance when the entangled qubits are divided between Alice and Bob. There's been numerous successful demonstrations of the protocol within labs, but we have to take something into consideration. Right now we have very robust and capable classical communication channels. So will we ever see a quantum channel that will be able to be powerful enough to outperform the speed and reliability of transmitting two bits classically. Another benefit of super dense codes is that it enables secure communication. If there's an attempted eavesdropping or qubit measurement during transmission, that'll be detectable by Alice and Bob. So in other words, the classical message cannot be received if the transmitted qubit is measured. Both qubits are required to recover messages so the eavesdropper cannot read Alice's message. There is a drawback, however. A malicious party could theoretically scramble the message by applying extra gates, so the not, y, or z gate. The attacker won't necessarily know what Bob receives, but it's not the message that Alice intended to send.